Dzień dobry. We are four members from Chicago's Maxwell Street Klezmer Band, an ensemble that has been dedicated to reviving the art of klezmer music, that is traditional Jewish music from Eastern Europe, since 1983. Today we will touch upon the highlights of this rich heritage as we play a program of songs and dances. Let's start at the beginning. In the year 960, a Jewish merchant traveled from Spain to Krakow and wrote about the city in his journal. That is the first known documentation of a Jew in Poland. But as the country grew in size and influence, more and more Jewish traders arrived and flourished within its borders. By the 14th century, as Jews were being persecuted in other countries, they flocked to Poland at the invitation of King Casimir the Great. Two main Jewish diaspora communities lived in Europe, the Sephardim from Spain and the Ashkenazim from Germany. The Ashkenazim fled to escape anti-Semitic violence and the Black Plague, which they were accused of starting. This is what brought the Jews en masse to Eastern Europe. By the early Middle Ages, the Jewish settlements on Eastern Europe were flourishing. They followed the merchant routes and settled between Kiev and Prague, Krakow and Lviv. By the 18th century, under the protection of a series of kings, the Jewish population of Poland had grown to 3.5 million, almost a full 7% of the total population of Poland. Now let's talk about the Jewish musicians, the klezmorem. In Yiddish, klezmer means a folk musician. The word is based upon the Hebrew words kle and zemer, which mean a vessel of song. Its plural, klezmorem, means musicians. The fiddler on the roof, he was a klezmer. And what about their language? As the Ashkenazim migrated east from Germany, the Yiddish language developed as a German dialect mixed with Hebrew and Slavic languages. Klezmer bands in Poland were an example of a creative exchange between Jews, Poles and Gypsies also called Roma. These musicians shared melodies and playing techniques with each other. They played at taverns, at weddings, for peasant celebrations, and at the country manners of the gentry. Although klezmer music contains elements of gypsy and Slavic folk music, it has its own unique sound. The origin of the klezmer style is wound up together with the religious sect known as Hasidism, a sect which was born in Poland. So let me tell you a little more about Hasidism. By the 1750s, 70% 70 of the Jews in the world lived in Poland. At that time, a boy was born to poor parents in Okopy Świętej Trójcy, a shtetl, a small town near Romania. This boy would grow up to change the face of Judaism. This young man, Israel ben Eliezer, would become known as the Baal Shem Tov, which means the master of a good name. He called his new religious movement Hasidism, from the Hebrew word Hasid, which means grace or compassion. Hasidism was a populist rebellion against the Jewish hierarchy of its time. Until then, a man had to have a high degree of religious scholarship and a lineage from a long line of rabbis to be considered holy. But to be a Hasid, you did not have to be a scholar or to graduate from an academy. You did not even have to be literate enough to read your prayers in Hebrew. You only had to believe deeply, to pray devoutly, and to express your love of God with ecstatic devotional singing and dancing. Do you remember Tevya the milkman, the poor Jewish peasant from Fiddler on the Roof? He was a chassid, a peasant who chanted intimately with God. By the mid-1800s, 
Hasidism had spread like wildfire across Poland and become the dominant movement of Eastern European Judaism. Their black caftans and hats were modeled after 18th century Polish nobility and are still worn by Hasidim today. Hasidic wordless melodies are called nigonim. These melodies were sung in a rowdy but harmonious chorus of men, using syllables like yai didi dai and ay yai yai instead of words. The Hasidim expressed pure emotion. To improve their spirited singing, they sometimes drank a little bronfen, a little whiskey together. And as a result, there are many Hasidic drinking songs. And here is one of our favorites. The Rebbe had geheißen freilach sein. The Rabbi says now it is time to be joyous und trinken bronfen. Nicht kein Wein, drink a little whiskey instead of wine. Klezmer music was rarely notated or transcribed. Klezmer musicians played by heart. Like the jazz musicians of today, Klezmerim would improvise original melodies in the moment, never playing the same notes twice. While the Klezmerim played Jewish music at their own community celebrations, they also played traditional Polish dances for the general public such as the mazurka and the polonaise, and folk dances like the Kuyaviak, Krakowiak, and Kaumeika. 
Here is a popular dance from the repertoire of the Klezmori, a Krakowiak. We call this next song the Galicianer versus the Litvak. Uh, let me give a little background. In America, there are vast and sometimes rancorous cultural differences between Northerners and Southerners. Just like this amongst the Jews of Eastern Europe, there was a similar divide between Northern Jews, called Litvaks or Lithuanians, and Southern Jews called Galicianers or Galician Jews. Southeastern Polish Jews. Galicianers were largely of the merchant class and they were pious Hasidim. The Litvaks came from the area stretching from northeastern Poland to Minsk and Bialystok, and it had its center in Vilna, with dozens of yeshivas, religious academies. Vilna was the heart of Jewish intellectualism. The great rabbi known as the Vilna Gaon was a sage who taught intellectual rigor and who despised the raucous mystical Hasidim. The Litvak considered himself to be a critical thinker, analytical, learned, cultivated, and worldly. The Galicianer considered the Litvak to be cold, dry, overly critical, overly rational, stubborn, and probably an atheist. By contrast, the Galicianer considered himself to be warm-hearted, down-to-earth, witty, a skilled businessman, and deeply pious. But the Litvak considered the Galicianer to be ignorant, coarse, backward, petit bourgeois, untrustworthy, and a superstitious religious fanatic. Alex and Bartek will now act out this rivalry. The Galicianer will be represented by Bartek on the clarinet, and Bartek actually comes from South Poland. The Galicianer, as we mentioned, is a poetic soul with a smile on his lips, a song in his heart, and the smell of onions on his breath. Alex, the violinist, as a resident of Minsk, is a bona fide Litvak. The Litvak is a man of great intellect and skill, who would like to have this opinion that he holds of himself confirmed by the Galicianer? And now, the Galicianer versus the Litvak. Thank you. 
Next, we will play a Yiddish folk song from Poland. Yiddish folk songs were passed down from generation to generation, but in the 1800s they began to be written down and performed formally in public. Zimra Zelikfeld was married to a prominent music scholar in Warsaw named Menachem Kipnis. Their folk song duet was enormously popular and toured all over Poland. They published several volumes of Yiddish folk songs that they collected. From 1912, here is a beautiful example that I learned from a 1930s recording by the folk singer Isa Kramer. Oy, Abraham, Abraham, me without you and you without me, it would be like a doorknob without a door. Abraham, do you remember, do you remember that little red dress that I used to wear? Do you remember what a pretty young woman I used to be? And he just looks at her and he says, Oi, <laughs> can you? Give me a kiss. By the 1920s, Jews had grown to 10% of the Polish population. I would like to speak about one of the pioneers of Polish jazz and theater music named Henryk Wars. Henryk Warszawski was born in Warsaw in 1902 to a family of musicians. He was a Polish Jewish Renaissance man. He taught on law faculty and got a degree in painting from the Academy of Fine Arts in Warsaw. But he dedicated his life to music. In the late 1920s, 
Varys began visiting one of Warsaw's best-known cabarets, Qui Procfo, where he became friends with Andrzej Vlast, a writer and an admirer of American jazz. In 1929, Varys and Vlast had a big musical breakthrough with Zatańczmy Tango, Let's Dance the Tango. Three years later, the orchestra had recorded 42 dance pieces and cut a record deal with Columbia Records. But then, the Nazis invaded Poland in 1939. Vars joined the army, fought, and was taken prisoner. But he escaped the deportation train and walked all the way to Lwów on foot. In Lwów, he founded a tea jazz orchestra along with several other stars like Eugenisch Bodel and Adam Aston, and they recorded albums together. Their orchestra toured across Russia and performed hundreds of times. To escape the Nazis, they traveled with the Polish army to the Middle East under the name Polish Parade. Living in barracks and suffering from hunger, they performed for the troops, often under fire. Vars survived the war, immigrated and became a Hollywood composer. Oddly enough, the one thing he composed you are probably familiar with is the theme song from the movie Flipper. From 1931, let's listen to Under the Samovar, recorded by Vars's orchestra in 1931. Our own performance of the song will follow. Wydziela do herbaty na 
Let's listen to original recordings of other members of Henrik Weiser's orchestra. In this 1936 recording, Adam Aston demonstrates the sophistication of the interwar Polish jazz scene as he sings this song by Irving Berlin. Aston, who was the Frank Sinatra of Poland, had recorded literally thousands of songs before the war. He escaped to London and went on to live a long life, although his Polish career was cut short. Nim pryśnie urok tych chwil, jak długo radość i miłość i szczęście jest w nas. Zatańczmy jeszcze ten raz, nim zblednie cudna ta Zanim rozdzielą nas setki mil, kilka chwil póki czas, zatańczmy jeszcze ten raz. Spójrz, jak szybko mija czas, księżyc się skrył wśród chmur i już zgadł. Niech jutro będzie co chce, niech świat się wali i pali, dziś szczęście jest w nas, zatańczmy jeszcze ten raz, zatańczmy jeszcze ten raz. Eugenius Bodo was a comic genius. In this 1934 video, he can be called the Polish Spike Jones. Moja niania nad kolyską tak śpiewała mi co dzień, że zdobędę w życiu wszystko i usunę wszystkich cień. No i prawdy była blisko, ale w tym jest właśnie w sen, że chodzę sobie, nic nie robię i to jest mój wdzięk. Już taki jestem zimny rań i dobrze mi jestem bez dwóch zdań. Bo w tym jest rzeczy sedno, że jest mi wszystko jedno. Już taki jestem zimny rań. Już taki jestem zimny drań i dobrze mi jestem bez zdań. Bo w tym jest rzeczy sedno, że jest mi wszystko jedno. Już taki jestem zimny drań. I would like to highlight one more important Polish Jewish composer, Jerzy Petersburski was born into a Warsaw Klezmer family in 1895. Unlike the generations of Klezmerin before him, Jerzy graduated from the Music Conservatory in Warsaw. In 1920, he went to Vienna, where he studied piano, composition and conducting with the great Arthur Schnabel. It was, it was with his cousin, Arthur Gold, 
that Petersburgsky rose to fame. In the mid-1920s, the Petersburgsky Gold Orchestra played ragtime, but went on to play tangos and jazz tunes to feed hungry audiences in Warsaw. Petersburgsky collaborated with cabarets and theaters, Mirage, Czarny Kot, Morskie Oko, and Quick Pro Quo. He composed hit after hit for all the popular singers of his time. In 1928, Petersburgsky's fame spread worldwide with the hit song Tango Milonga, performed as O Donna Clara by singers like Al Jolson and Edith Piaf. His other best-known tango is Ostatnia Nigelia, The Last Sunday, composed in 1933, a sad song about the final meeting of two lovers. It became even more famous in Russian as Utomlionaya Sonce, The Weary Sun. He wrote operettas and film scores Known as the King of Tango, in 1936 he was awarded the Golden Cross of Merit as the first Polish composer whose music transcended our borders. After fighting the Nazi invasion as a pilot in the Polish Air Force in 1939, Petersburski escaped to the safety of Soviet-occupied Poland. In 1941, he joined the Polish court and was evacuated to the Middle East. After surviving the war, he settled in South America, where he composed dozens more popular dance hits in Spanish. In 1968, at the age of 74, after the tragic death of his wife in Argentina, Petersburski moved back to Warsaw, where he continued writing music and where he married Sylvia Kledish, an opera singer. Their son, Jerzy Petrburski Jr., was born in 1969. Petrburski died in 1979 and is buried in Warsaw's Powonski Cemetery. Jerzy Petrburski Jr. writes that, my parents experienced the great joy of having a son and I finally saw who had been playing the piano and singing me to sleep for nine months. Thanks to this, when I was born, I already knew a few of my dad's hits by heart. Jerzy Sr. taught his son piano and composition, and Jerzy Jr. is now a well-known composer and TV personality in his own right. Here is the original 1936 rendition of Petersburski's famous tango Ostatnia Niedziela, sung by Mieczysław Fok. Then we will play the song for you. Nie pora szukać wymówek 
Fakt, że skończyło się Dziś przyszedł drugi, bogatszy i lepszy ode mnie I wraz z tobą skradł szczęście me Jedną mam prośbę, może ostatnią Pierwszą od wielu lat Daj mi tę jedną niedzielę, ostatnią niedzielę A potem nie chwali się świat to ostatnia niedziela, dzisiaj się rozstaniemy, dzisiaj się rozejdziemy na wieczny czas. To ostatnia niedziela, więc nie żaluj jej dla mnie. Spojrzyj czule dziś na mnie ostatni raz. Będziesz jeszcze dość tych niedziel miała. A co ze mną będzie, któż to wie? Ostatnia niedziela, moje sny wymarzone, szczęście tak upragnione, skończyło się.
Polish klezmorum had a major impact in America. From the 1880s through the 1920s, Eastern European Jews poured through New York's Ellis Island, escaping poverty and pogroms. Many of the musicians who came here became songwriters on Tin Pan Alley and played in American jazz bands, while some musicians like Irving Berlin left the music of the shtetl behind Others continued to play it in America. The klezmer clarinetist was often called king of the klezmer band because of the clarinet's emotional expressiveness. One of those klezmer clarinetists who was a great exemplar of the Jewish jazz style was named Naftuli Brandwein. Born in Galicia to a klezmer family, Brandwein emigrated to the U.S. in 1908, where his virtuosity can be heard on the 2078 RPM recordings that he had recorded by 1927. The recordings had a profound influence on the Klezmer revival 50 years later. Brandwein's nephew, Leopold Kozlowski, who remained in Poland and only died two years ago, was the subject of a 1994 documentary called The Last Klezmer. Bartik will play a Naftulia Brandwein clarinet piece based on a sad song in Yiddish called Wo bist du gewein, wenn de Geld ist gewein? Where were you when you had money in your pockets? Brandwein plays this song at breakneck speed, and so will Bartik. <laughs>
to introduce the next song from the Yiddish theater. Let's go back to the late 1800s, to the birth of the Polish Jewish theater. In the mid 19th century, Yiddish operettas and folk plays were first performed. The art evolved until by 1938, you could have attended a sold out house of over a thousand seats in Wuch to see Shakespeare's The Tempest in Yiddish. By the interwar period, the Polish Yiddish theater was in full bloom and Warsaw, where Jews made up one third of the city's population was the center of European Jewish culture. In 1913, Esther Rachel Kaminsky founded the Jewish theater, the Teatr Zhidowski in Warsaw. Her daughter, the actress Ida Kaminska, directed the theater until the invasion of Poland. After the war, she returned to Warsaw and reopened the theater, which she continued to direct until she retired in 1968. Today, the theater lives on as the Esther Rachel and Ida Kaminska Jewish Theater in Warsaw. Back in 1898 in America, a diminutive 4 foot 11 inch 95 pound actress and singer named Malka Opikuna was born to Polish Jewish immigrants. 33 years later, when she bought the Second Avenue Theater, she renamed it after herself, the Molly Pekin Theater. In 1937, Molly and her producer husband, Jacob Kalich, filmed a musical called Yiddle Meet and Fiddle, Yiddle with his fiddle. The film was shot on location in Kazimierz, Poland, together with the actors from the Polish Yiddish Theater. Yiddle Mitten Fiddle is the story of a klezmer musician and his daughter whom he dresses up as a boy for her own protection as they play their music from town to town. They meet up with another klezmer duet and join forces. Let's watch how their battle for the street corner turns into a collaboration. Thank <laughs> you. 
are two songs from the hit movie, Jedel Mitten Fiddle. In the ballad, Spiel die Fiddle, Spiel, Jedel sings of her love for the handsome fiddler who ignores her because he thinks she's a boy. Play, you fiddle, play. Play me a love song. Play until your strings burst. Only you know how I feel. The next song, Yiddle Meet and Fiddle, is a song of the freedom of the open road. The wind laughs in your face and Yiddle rolls on. Yiddle with his fiddle, Arya with his bass. Life is just a little song, so why be so upset? Hey, Yiddle, fiddle, schmiddle. Life is just a game. is by Mordechai Gebirtig, who was born in Krakow in 1877. A poet and a bard, Gebirtig's songs are still some of the best loved in the Yiddish repertoire. They were written in such a natural style that people assume that they are just folk songs. In his song called Kinder Joren, My Childhood Years, Gebirtig describes life nostalgically through weary eyes. My mama used to walk me to Hebrew school, and when she would drop me off, she always gave my cheek a pinch. I still feel that pinch on my cheek, although mama has been gone for many years. Sweet childhood years, how quickly I have become old. Alex learned this song in Minsk from his grandfather, who practiced Judaism in secret there. Okay. 
The singer, Isa Kramer, was saved by an incident that happened in 1922 when she was touring Europe. In Warsaw, her concert had to be canceled due to an anti-Semitic riot that took place outside of the Philharmonic Concert Hall, an experience that caused her to flee from Europe to the United States. Of the six million Jews killed by the Nazis, three million were Polish. In all, 90% of the Jews of Poland perished. Among those were the poet Mordechai Gebertig in the Krakow ghetto, and the folk singer Zimra Zelikfeld, who was deported from the Warsaw ghetto. But the music refuses to die, and now there is a lively revival of klezmer music in Poland. In the early 1990s, the klezmer music revival, which had begun in the United States, reached Europe. Polish cities now hold festivals that attract klezmer bands from all over the world. The most famous festivals are the Warszawa Zingera, Simcha in Wrocław, the Festival of Four Cultures in Kalish, and the largest one, the Festival of Jewish Culture in Kraków. For many years, the Polish government has run educational programs about Jewish culture at museums and schools. After many band, bands visited from abroad, 
homegrown Polish klezmer bands like Kroke, Galicianer Klezmorin, and Anashim appeared. We are now witnessing an appreciation of Jewish music and culture mostly among non-Jewish Poles. I was born in 1978 in the little town of Szybodzice in Lower Silesia, Poland, a land full of medieval castles and beautiful landscapes. Before World War II it was in Germany, but after the war it was given back to Poland. My parents decided to build a house in Strzegom, a town with amazing Gothic architecture and traditions of many cultures. Although I'm not Jewish myself, I became interested in klezmer music when I went to music high school in the 1990s. Because of the rich history of Jewish music in Poland, I was exposed to klezmer bands on TV, at festivals, and even in Krakow's Jewish borough of Kazimierz, where until today you can hear klezmer music played on the streets. As a young clarinetist, I was drawn to this music with its emotionally expressive style. I was accepted to the University of Music in Łódź, an important city in Jewish history. Then my music adventure started in earnest. At that time, there was no internet and very limited access to klezmer sheet music, so I began to listen to recordings and to transcribe them note for note. Then in 2000, my friends and I started a klezmer trio. We enjoyed a bit of success, we recorded two CDs and played on Polish national TV. After graduation, I played clarinet and piano as a member of the Sudetska Symphony in Wałbrzych. Then, in 2009, I met two professional musicians and together we created a new klezmer band that we called Klezmerado. For almost 10 years, we played hundreds of concerts at synagogues, festivals, Jewish organizations and on TV and became the best known klezmer band in our region. My dream and passion had become to sound like a real klezmer. Then suddenly life gave me another opportunity. In 2019, after I immigrated to Chicago, I was discovered by the Maxwell Street Klezmer Band. To play with real klezmer musicians was beyond my wildest dreams. Even with the long interruption of the pandemic, which stopped performances around the world, I am now closer than ever to my dream. Let the spirit of Klezmer live on!